Nuclear power has been thrown about for many years as a way to provide substantial amounts of energy for ourselves, but with a very high risk of failure. This risk of failure of meltdown is not apparent in today's reactors. The World Nuclear Association states that the risk of the best currently operating nuclear reactors in the world is 1 in 1 million, but the standard for reactor designs to meet is 1 in 10,000. Nuclear energy is the densest form of energy available, far surpassing coal and oil potential. However, nuclear energy is not a perfect energy source, so it cannot be solely counted on as a 100% baseload source. Nuclear waste is very difficult to manage and dispose of properly, causing expensive problems. If not managed properly, radiation can seep into the ground, causing problems for centuries. Fossil fuels are running out as well. In Hannah Richty's article, How Long Before We Run Out of Fossil Fuels, she states that fossil fuels will become history in the next 50 to 100 years, <clears throat> and a new source of energy will need to become standard. This new source will be needed within the next 100 years, and nuclear power provides for a good alternative. As a mechanical engineering major, I find these types of things fascinating and learn about them a lot. There are two different types of reactors that have potential for the future. These types are generation three reactors and generation four reactors, which are still a work in progress. First, we'll take a look at a reactor that's been used in use for a long time called a light water reactor. Uh, this reactor uh, is called an AP1000 light water reactor or LWR. The LWR is the most widely used nuclear reactor design in the world with the majority of early US nuclear reactor designs being of this design. Now this design consists of a reactor vessel, a steam generator, a turbine and generator combo, and a condenser. So the reactor vessel is where all the uranium is and that creates a lot of heat. The heat then goes to the steam generator which takes the water, turns into steam, which turns a st steam turbine creating energy. Uh, and then the steam is condensed back into water here and the cycle repeats itself. <clears throat> a single LWR in the United States costs about $7.27 million today, including safety regulation fees, which make up the majority of the costs. Energy production with a reactor standard capacity factor of 92.5% comes out at 1,005 megawatts average, hence the name AP1000. According to Mike Conley and Tim Maloney, to power the entire country with solely this type of reactor, it would cost $2.94 trillion, and using 500 AP1000 reactors would give enough power to replace every power plant in the U.S., including our current reactors. 500 AP1000 reactors would use 1.95 square miles, or the size of Central Park. Now we'll take a look at another type of reactor that's currently in development. This new reactor, a uh, Gen 4 reactor that's not actually new, as the concept was thought of in the 1950s, but was canceled until now, is called a molten salt reactor, or MSR. There are a lot of reasons this type is more favorable, such as it can't melt down, it doesn't need an external cooling system, it's naturally and automatically self-regulating, and the list goes on. Another major benefit is that it can use a large variety of fuels, such as thorium, a waste product, made from light water reactors. This would enable the two reactors to work in tandem with each other, with the one using the waste products of the other. Now, this reactor works like this. So this is the reactor core right here, and uh, this creates heat, sends it to the, the steam generator, which then turns into steam and creates electricity through a steam turbine, the same way that this one does. Well, what's different about this one is the fuel can be sent to a reprocessing uh, module, where, this, where it can be reprocessed back into usable fuel, which can then be put back into the system again. And that's how you can use thorium and uh, other types of fuel within this reactor module here. This type of reactor could be the ticket to the future by powering the entire country on a theoretical $1 trillion with an unknown land requirement because they are still in development. These two types of reactors could be the energy solution we are looking for even if you think that nuclear reactor is the worst possible solution, maybe now you can see differently. Now you know about these reactors and their benefits and can consider them as potential energy solutions for the future. The closest habitable planet is 14 light years away 
and there isn't technology available to get there. So if this planet goes down, so does everything living on it. Thank you.